The Lancia Beta, Type 828, was an entry-level luxury car produced by Italian car manufacturer Lancia from 1972 to 1984. It was the first new model introduced by Lancia after it had been taken over by Fiat in 1969. The Beta was made in several body styles, namely four-door fastback saloon, Beta Berlina, four-door three-box, notchback saloon, Beta Trevi, two-door coupe, Beta Coupe, two-door Targa, Beta Spider, three-door estate, Beta HPE, a mid-engine sports car was also sold under the Beta name, the Lancia Beta Monte Carlo. When Fiat acquired Lancia in 1969, the company had been without a technical director for the year following the death of technical director Antonio Fessia. Ing. Sergio Camufo was given the job of developing the new model in early 1970. Although in the difficult years before the Fiat takeover, a number of the engineering staff had left the company, Camufo was able to pull together a core of Lancia engineers, who were tasked with getting the car into production by the end of 1972. Romanini, chassis design, Zacconi Mina, engine development, with Giglio and Bencini in testing. This was a very short time frame, and development money was relatively limited. These were key factors that influenced the decision to use an existing power plant, the Fiat twin overhead cam straight four engine with its alloy head and cast iron block. At the Beta's launch late in 1972 Fiat chief Johnny Agnelli told journalists that Lancia's output would be about 40,000 units in 1972 at a time when a volume of 100,000 was needed to cover the fixed costs involved in developing and building the cars. Lancia's lack of profitability was also evidenced by the absence of replacement models under development at the time of the Fiat takeover. The Lancia Fulvia, though much loved, had been developed with little concern for making it cost-effective to manufacture. It had therefore been sold at a high price in correspondingly low volumes. The company's new owner's objective with the new beta was to retain the quality image and price premium of existing Lancias, while minimizing development time and production costs, using in-house Fiat Group technology and parts where possible. The project adapted a well-regarded existing Fiat engine, fitted transversely and driving the front wheels, in line with Fiat's investment in this configuration during the previous decade. The gearbox was a development of a transmission unit then being developed by Fiat partner Citroën for a forthcoming model of their own. Above all, and in contrast with the Fulvia, the Beta design was relatively inexpensive to produce in volumes significantly higher than those achieved by predecessor Lancia saloons. The company chose the name Beta for a new vehicle to be launched in 1972. The choice of name symbolized a new beginning as it reflected the fact that the company's founder, Vincenzo Lancia, 1881 to 1937, had used letters of the Greek alphabet for his early vehicles, such as Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and so on. Beta, had been used before, for Lancia's 1908 car and again for a 1953 bus. Lancia had previously used the first letter of the Greek alphabet, Alpha, but this was not chosen for the new 1972 Lancia due to the obvious confusion it might cause with Alfa Romeo. All versions of the car came with DOHC engines, 5-speed gearboxes, rack and pinion steering, fully independent suspension using McPherson struts, both front and rear, with disc brakes on all four wheels. The front-wheel drive models were available in a number of engine capacities ranging from 1.3 liters to 2.0 liters. Breathing was provided by a single Weber carburetor until fuel injection was introduced on late 2-liter HPE and coupe models. As with a number of previous front-wheel drive Lancia models, the engine and gearbox were mounted on a subframe that bolted to the underside of the body. However, in the beta the engine and manual gearbox were fitted transversely in line. This Fiat-inspired configuration not only enabled neat engine bay packaging, but also, by tilting the engine 20 degrees rearwards, the Lancia engineers achieved improved weight transfer over the driven wheels and towards the center of the car, as well as lowering the center of gravity. The rear-wheel drive Lancia Monte Carlo employed a similar layout except the subframe was mounted at the rear. On the front-wheel drive betas, Lancia designed a particularly original independent rear suspension with McPherson struts attached to parallel transverse links that pivoted on a centrally mounted crossmember bolted to the underside of the floor pan. An anti-roll bar was fitted to the floor pan ahead of the rear struts with both ends of the bar trailing back to bolt to the rear struts on each side. This unique design went on to be used in later Lancia models. The design was never patented by Lancia, 
and consequently inspired similar rear suspension system layouts in other manufacturers' vehicles during the 1980s and 1990s. A short wheelbase coupe was introduced in June 1973, then the following year the 2-2 Spider convertible. At the 1975 Geneva Motor Show Lancia launched the HPE, High Performance Estate, styled in a similar vein to the Reliant Scimitar and Volvo 1800 ES while utilizing the wheelbase of the Berlina. Later the Beta Monte Carlo, a two-seater mid-engine coupe was launched. The different models all underwent various revisions and improvements over the years. Power steering specially produced by the German company ZF became available on certain left-hand drive models and was also used on the Gamma. For 1975, the exterior styling was modified by Pininfarina. The back window has been relocated in a more upright position. To aid visibility, the rear quarter pillars gained sharper trailing edges, the waistline was lowered and windows made larger. Electronic ignition became available in 1978, automatic transmission became available the same year, the Beta was the first Lancia manufactured with an automatic transmission factory option. In 1981 power steering also became available on certain right-hand drive models. Also in that year a fuel-injected version of the 2.0-liter engine became available on certain models. The Coupe and HPE underwent a facelift in June 1983, at the same time that the supercharged VX versions were introduced, and remained available for a little while longer than the other body styles. Late in the model's life Lancia released the Trevi VX, with a roots-type supercharger fitted between the carburetor and low-compression 2.0-liter engine. The Coupe VX and HPE VX followed soon after, June 1983. These three variants were known as Volumex models and had the highest performance of all the road-going production betas, with 135 brake horsepower, 101 kilowatt, and substantially increased torque over the normal 2-liter 200 Nm, 148 pound-feet. The Coupe VX and HPE VX can be distinguished from the normal cars by the offset bulge on the hood which is required to clear the new air intake. A spoiler fitted below the front bumper and the rubber rear spoiler. They also have stiffer spring rates. Lancia produced 1272 Coupe VX, 2370 HPE VX and 3900 Trevi VX. Most were left-hand drive, only 186 right-hand drive HPEs and around 150 right-hand drive coupes were imported to the UK. However the car was also sold in some other RHD markets so exact RHD production remains unknown. Only one right-hand drive Trevi VX was made. A small number of Trevis were built to run on LPG rather than petrol, gasoline. This car marked a brief return of Lancia to the United States market beginning in 1975. Federalization was not quite harmonious, though, which combined with a lack of dealers to persuade US buyers. All body styles except the Trevi were on offer at one time or another, although some were sold under different names. The Spider was sold as the Lancia Zagato, from 1979, and the Monte Carlo as the Lancia Scorpion. Federalized cars were originally sold with a 1,756 cubic centimeters twin cam engine with 86 horsepower, 64 kilowatt. This later dropped to 83 horsepower, 62 kilowatt, as emissions rules were tightened. For the 1979 model year, a 2-liter engine was installed, with power up somewhat, to 87 horsepower, 65 kilowatt. More importantly, torque was up by 17%. A black and gold Zagato Special Edition was also available. Quality problems meant that US inspectors went to visit the plant to see what could be improved, but Lancia took a hiatus and did not bring any 1980 models. When returning in 1981, the Berlina was dropped as they focused on the more popular sporting variants. Fuel injection increased the two. Zero's power considerably, to about 108 horsepower, 81 kilowatt. The published numbers vary considerably. 1982 was the last year for Lancia's half-hearted efforts in the United States. The Beta was available in a number of different body styles, introduced in 1972, the first body style to appear, and the most common was the four-door Berlina, Saloon, with a wheelbase of 2,535 millimeters, 99.8 inches, and fastback styling giving the appearance of a hatchback, although in fact it had a conventional boot like a saloon. This practice was common in the industry at the time as manufacturers deemed that hatchback designs would not be accepted in this market sector. 
It featured 1400, 1600 and 1800 transversely mounted twin cam engines based on earlier Fiat designs along with 5-speed gearbox. In 1974 the 1.8 ES version was launched featuring electric windows, alloy wheels and sunroof. At the Turin Auto Show in November 1974 a 1300-engine 1300 joined the range at the bottom, then in the fall of 1975 the existing 1600 and 1800 engines were replaced by new 1600 and 2000 units. The 2.0-liter units had improved torque, up 20% to 128 pounds-feet at 2800 revolutions per minute. In the same year Lancia returned to the US market with the Beta. Automatic versions were introduced in 1978. In 1981 the 2.0 became available with electronic fuel injection. Berlina production ended in 1981. Late in the Beta's life, with assistance from Pininfarina, a substantially reworked four-door three-box, notchback saloon variant was released as the Trevi. The Trevi also introduced an original new dashboard layout designed by Mario Bellini which was then applied to the third series Berlina. Number built. 194,914 Berlinas plus 36,784 Trevis. In 1973 the second style to appear was a 222-door coupe with a 2,350mm, 92.5 inches, wheelbase, although due to the fuel crisis did not become available to the public until early 1974. It was launched with 1.6 and 1.8 liter engines. New 1.6 and 2.0L engines replaced the original units in late 1975, followed by a 1.3 liters in early 1976. In 1978, the Beta Coupe became available with an automatic transmission and power steering. In 1981, the car received a minor facelift and at the same time the 2.0 became available with fuel Bosch electronic fuel injection. In 1983, a 2.0 VX supercharged engine became available with an output of 135 brake horsepower. The bodywork was developed in-house by a Lancia team led by Aldo Costagno, with Piero Costagnero acting as styling consultant. Costagnero had also styled the Beta's predecessor, the Lancia Fulvia Saloon and Coupe. Number built. 111,801. This was one of the body styles to be marketed in North America. The 2.0 liters twin cam i4 offered in North America produced 108 horsepower, 81 kilowatt, 109 PS, at 5,500 revolutions per minute. The next version to be launched was a two-door convertible called the Spider, or Zagato in America, also with 2-2 seating. The Spider used the coupe's shorter wheelbase and featured a targa top roof panel, a rollover bar and folding rear roof. Early models did not have a crossmember supporting the roof between the tops of the A to B pillars. Later models had fixed crossmembers. Production started in 1975. It was initially powered by either the 1600 or 1800 twin cam engine, later being replaced by the new 1.6 and 2.0. In Europe, it never received the fuel-injected engine, although a fuel-injected version was sold in the US market in 1981 and 1982. The Spider was designed by Pininfarina but actually built by Zagato. The construction process was complex, with coupe bodies in white being delivered to Zagato for the roofless conversion, then back to Lancia for rust proofing, then back to Zagato for paint, interior and trim, and then back to Lancia for a third time for engine installation and final assembly. Lancia probably lost money on every car built. Number built. 9390. In the early 1980s Lancia also produced a small number of Lancia Spider Volume X, supercharged, cars. This was the last Lancia to be offered in the United States, being the company's sole offering in 1982, their last year in the country. The Beta HPE was a three-door sporting estate or shooting brake introduced in March 1975. HPE stood for High Performance Estate, and then later High Performance Executive. This model had Berlina's longer wheelbase floor pan combined with the coupe's front end and doors. The HPE was also styled in-house at Lancia by Costagno's team, with Costagnero as styling consultant. At launch it came with either 1600 or 1800 twin cam engines, these being replaced in November of the same year by new 1.6 and 2.0 units. In 1978, like other beta models automatic transmission became available along with power steering. It was renamed the Lancia HPE, without the Beta, from 1979 and in autumn 1981 gained the option of a fuel-injected 2.0 engine. In 1984 a 2.0 VX supercharged version became available. 
Like all other cars in the beta range the HPE was discontinued in 1984. The final car to carry the beta badge was the Pininfarina designed and built two-door Lancia Monte Carlo, announced in March 1974. This was a rear-wheel drive, mid-engine two-seater sports car that shared very few components with other betas. The car was originally designed as Pininfarina's contender to replace Fiat's 124 coupe, but lost out to Bertoni's cheaper design, which became the Fiat X19. Pininfarina's design was called the X120 at the prototype stage. Lancia launched the Monte Carlo as a premium alternative to the X19, with the 2.0-liter twin-cam engine rather than the X19's single-cam 1.3-liter. Both used a similar chassis floor plan, based on the Fiat 128 McPherson strut front suspension and disc brakes at both front and rear. Lancia Beta parts were limited to those from the existing Fiat, Lancia standard parts bin. The transverse mount version of the Fiat 124's twin-cam engine and the five-speed gearbox and transaxle. Monte Carlos were available as fixed head, coupes, and also as spiders, with solid A and B pillars, but a large flat folding canvas roof between them. The very first examples had steel panels to the rear wings above the engine bay, but this limited version made reversing difficult and it was replaced by glass panels. This gave a flying buttress appearance to the rear, similar to the Maserati Merrick. First series cars, 1975 to 1978, were badged Lancia Beta Monte Carlo. They were named Monte Carlo, written as one word, not Monte Carlo, one of Monaco's administrative areas, although the rear badge reads Monte Carlo. There was then a two-year gap in production in order to revise a brake issue where the brakes had a tendency to lock up. Lancia solved this problem by removing the brake servo. The revised second series cars, 1980 to 1981, were simply badged as Lancia Monte Carlo. In the United States, the first series cars were marketed as the Scorpion alongside the rest of the Beta range, as General Motors was already using the name Monte Carlo for a Chevrolet model. The Scorpion name was a reference to Abarth, 7,798 Monte Carlos were built between 1975 to 1981. For some the Beta was not a Lancia but rather a Fiat. However Lancia had some autonomy from Fiat in the development of the Beta. The main reason for the Fiat label was that despite its unique Lancia chassis, suspension, interior and bodywork, the Beta used a Fiat-based engine. The Fiat twin-cam engine, originally designed by Aurelio Lampredi, who built engines for Ferrari until Fiat employed him, was one of the most advanced four-cylinder engines in Europe at that time. It continued in production well into the 1990s and, in highly developed form, was used in performance road cars such as the Lancia Delta Integral and Fiat Coupe. The Lancia engineers made minor changes to the engines fitted to the Beta range. These included new inlet and exhaust manifolds as well as different carburation. In addition the mounting points on the engine block were different so as to allow for the transverse installation as opposed to the longitudinal installation utilized by the rear-wheel drive Fiats. For these reasons the engines are not interchangeable between Betas and contemporary Fiats such as the Fiat 132. The Beta was very well received by the motoring press and public when launched. The various models were praised for their performance and their good handling and road holding. They were widely regarded as a driver's car with plenty of character. The Beta was competitively priced in export markets and managed to become the highest ever selling Lancia model up to that point. Unfortunately the Beta gained a reputation for being rust prone, particularly the first series vehicles, built from 1972 to 1975. A widely circulated rumor states that the cars used Soviet steel supplied to Fiat in return for building the Lada factory. However, these claims have never been verified. The steel problems are more likely due to poor rust-proofing techniques as well as the prolonged strikes that plagued Italy at that time rather than the metal's origin. The corrosion problems could be structural, for instance where the subframe carrying the engine and gearbox was bolted to the underside of the car. The box section to which the rear of the subframe was mounted could corrode badly, causing the subframe to become loose. Although tales of subframes dropping out of vehicles were simply not true, a vehicle with a loose subframe would fail a technical inspection. It was not just the Series 1 cars or saloons. According to an employee of the recycling firm that disposed of the Betas, the Series 2, HPE, Coupe and Spider models were all affected and by late 1983, the scrap dealer Hallett Metals in Krukern, Somerset had crushed the last of the affected cars. 
In fact, by 1983 Series 2 cars outnumbered Series 1 models by a large percentage. Deliveries to Hallett Metals were handled mainly by transport company Abbey Hill. Before being crushed, flattened, the engine and gearboxes would be removed and placed in a separate container and no parts were to be removed or resold to the public. In the UK, Lancia's largest export market at the time, the company listened to the complaints from its dealers and customers and commenced a campaign to buy back vehicles affected by the subframe problem. Some of these vehicles were six years old or older and belonged to second or third owners. Customers were invited to present their cars to a Lancia dealer for an inspection. If their vehicle was affected by the subframe problem, the customer was offered a part exchange deal to buy another Lancia or Fiat car. The cars that failed the inspection were scrapped. However, on 9 April 1980 the Daily Mirror and TV programs reported on the issue. There were claims that the problem persisted in later cars by showing photographs of scrapped first series saloons, referring to them as being newer than five and six years old. Other contemporary manufacturers whose cars also suffered from corrosion were not treated as harshly. Lancia had already introduced one year previously a six-year anti-corrosion warranty, an automotive first in the UK. Whilst later Betas, second series cars, had reinforced subframe mounting points and post-1979 cars were better protected from the elements, these issues damaged the whole Mark's sales success on most export markets. The revision to the crossmember was quite simple and meant turning it through 180 degrees forming an in-channel rather than a u-channel thus preventing dirt and water collecting and causing rust.